Hello, let's dive into all things neurofeedback. So those of you who know me know I've been doing neurofeedback a really long time. And neurofeedback is something many people have heard of. They have no idea what it is. And let me tell you something, you need to know about neurofeedback for just about any mental health condition you can think of. It is a game changer in mental health. And neurofeedback has been around over 50 years. There are tens of thousands of research studies and over 3,000 peer-reviewed studies. That's the Mac Daddy of research. It means that our peers in our field have looked over this research and found it to be quality research. So, what is neurofeedback? How does it work? How can it help you? How can it help your child? That's what we're going to dive into um, in this talk right now. So neurofeedback, it doesn't matter what your clinical condition is. What I like to talk about, um, certainly in our Brain Behavior Reset Program and what we do, it's about the brain being over or under stimulated. It's about brain dysregulation. And when we step back from the names of the clinical issues and we think about what are the behaviors you see? When you're overstimulated, you see things like anxiety, depression, anger, um, irritation, overthinking, problems sleeping. When your brain is under stimulated, you see problems with processing speed and focus and motivation. And you can have a combination of both. And in fact, when I do neurofeedback with people, the first part in the process is something called a QEG brain map or a brain check if people are not close to us. Um, and just so everybody knows, I work with people all over the world and the process is we start with collecting data. And if people decide to fly in, which people do all the time, and I just have to say, I have some of the coolest clients in the planet who are doing some really awesome things. Um, and I love that they come to me because um, they're so committed to their own health, their mental health, and their kid and family's mental health, right? So, but you don't have to do that. We work remotely with people and we do a brain check and I'll explain that with what that is. And if you're interested in working with me, please check the notes or the end tile if you're watching this video, but you can go to D-R-R-O-S-E-A-N-N.com forward slash apply. So drrosanne.com forward slash apply and apply to work with us because you already know we only work with a small group of people because you get a bringing trust behind you, a whole team of people, and we just can only work with a little bit of people at a time. So we really want people to apply because we want to see what your commitment level, and we want to make sure we're giving you the best resources. And sometimes you might need another resource that we have, um, and we guide you toward that when you apply. So what is the process of neurofeedback? And just to break it down, what we do is our proprietary method in our brain behavior reset. And this is what you're only going to get here. But the process is checking under the hood with a QEEG or a brain check. And that involves really an intake with me. I do all the intakes. Yep. When you're in our program, you get me. It's the only way to get me. And then it's a series of almost everybody does neurofeedback. It may involve therapy, counseling, coaching, but we work on resetting the brain, calming that brain down. I love PMF. I love um, biofeedback. And we'll save that for another conversation. And then we do new learning because an alert brain or a calm brain, uh, you still have to learn new things. So that is our process and what we do. So most people, before I dive into, you know, what neurofeedback actually is, you know, just on a really top line level, it's that way to get that overstimulation, understimulation regulated. Um, and then we do a series of sessions. Most people are doing 40 or so sessions twice a week, 30 minutes. There is no really age perimeters or it's typically three and a half to 80 plus. I have had all ages. Um, and it doesn't matter what your clinical condition is. You could have 
like the messiest house. We're going to get in there and get there. And for me, uh, the clinical condition doesn't matter. It's people's commitment level. Do you have two or three times a week that you can do this? Are you willing to make lifestyle changes? Um, really, really important, right? So you can't just give up those Cheetos and lose weight and then think you can eat them again, right? So what are you going to do to regulate the brain? So what's a QEG? What happens? So first of all, when you come in in center, you're able to see what is happening over the structures of the brain, also able to see how the brain is talking to itself. It's a QEG. We're going to do a whole other episode on a QEG so you can dive into that. And it gives us a visual representation of the health of the brain. And from that, we can make really concrete treatment recommendations because there's no guessing. And when you know a certain area is or is not working, we know exactly what the brain does. So we're able to say this person can't have good executive functioning or this person is very anxious based on if it's overstimulated or understimulated um, and how that brain is talking to itself. The brain check after people do an intake with me, if you're accepted into our program and we feel like we can work with you, we then send you equipment and we take statistical averages in certain regions of your brain related to the intake. This is These are data points. You need data. You know, one of my beefs is that we're not looking at data when it's readily available. And from there, we make really, really customized individualized treatment recommendations and you get the whole team. You don't just get me, you get these people that are amazing human beings that are really committed. So after we do that, you do neurofeedback. What is neurofeedback? Okay. So you, through the use of computers, the brain gets reinforced for producing a healthy combination of brain waves. Okay. So what's so flipping cool about neurofeedback is safe, effective through research, n absolutely no research to show there's any long-term negative side effects. I'm like, hello, medication, which is 100% of the time going to have some type of negative side effect and 100% of the time going to have some toxicity. It's just is that top, is that reducing a symptom? So, and you know, I'm not opposed to medication. I'm opposed to it 100% of the time being the first line of defense, de line 100% of the time being it the first line of defense in a developing brain, right? So 70% of all medications for children and psychiatric conditions are used off label. This is not okay. We have safe, effective alternatives and neurofeedback is one of them. And I am so proud to be talking about it because I hope you're having aha moments. So through the use of computers, you're hooked to a computer the brain gets reinforced for producing a healthy uh, combination of brain waves. What is that healthy combination of brain waves? Like, what does it look like? What is reinforcement? So first of all, sensors are measuring. They are nothing is coming through the wire. So I, Dr. Roseanne makes all her protocols and it's the same for everybody else. When you make a protocol, certain area has to produce a certain brain wave, right? As I like to say, you might be like, what you talking about, Willis? Right? So what happens, my 80s reference people, um, is that when your brain is producing this healthy combination, which it will within two to three seconds of the first hookup, because it's based on operant conditioning, the brain wants to actually get this feedback, which in what we're using is movies. The movie will or will not play. So the brain says, oh, I want this movie to play. Number one movie in the office, Back to the Future. So, <laughs> so you watch Back to the Future, your brain says, oh, I want to see what Doc is going to do. Let me get this healthy combination of brain waves. It's not really that conscious, but your subconscious is doing it. So you're in a session, just like working out, you get on a treadmill, boom, you could do that treadmill, but the muscle is not going to build right away. That's why you need two to three sessions a month. Most people are taking about six months. Some people need more. It's all based on, you know, how your brain is approaching this learning. Um, and 
Every brain is possible of improving and training. This is something you don't have to believe in or like, even though it's pretty amazing. You usually feel calm and alert. Um, I could tell you so many amazing, amazing stories, but I have, um, I've had a lot of challenging cases. It doesn't matter how challenging they are. And when I mean challenging, it means people are in distress. And even though we work with all ages, you know, a lot of kids come in and, you know, they believe that they're bad and people have told them they're bad. There is not a bad kid on the planet, right? Mamas and papas. I hate when people make people feel like that's not okay. But what happened is in this case, and um, this kid felt terrible and was very ashamed and acted that way and was very angry. And his mom, when I did a review, said to me, Roseanne, my difference at home is black and white. And one of the most special things that happened is for the first time in his life, he was able to go to church. Um, I get pretty verklempt when I hear that. And that is not unusual. Um, and mom, what did she do? She was coming in at least three times a week. They were really making lifestyle changes at home to support his brain changes um, and really getting in there. So neurofeedback is a process of measurement and reinforcement. The brain is getting reinforced for staying regulated over a series of sessions, two to three a week. And it's going to take time. This is not, it's pretty magical, but it's not magic. So it's not going to be overnight. It's like exercise. It needs to be reinforced over time. And it's pleasant. You can use it for any age. Um, there's very few conditions it's not appropriate for. And you name a, a condition. Um, my next podcast is going to be about what are the conditions it's good for. And I hope you listen to that. And I hope this has helped to open your mind about neurofeedback and an option. It is something that I am so passionate about. And even though I've been holistic for 30 years, it was the biggest game changer with a kid named Alec, um, who still to this day had the worst case of ADHD I've ever seen. And he is a man. And he went and got neurofeedback with somebody else who opened up my world um, to the power of it. And it was a kid who had tried medications and had all these problems and everyone just sort of wrote this kid off and he would have been absolutely diagnosed with autism, even though um, he wasn't, he just brain was just not connecting. So he's happy and successful in all areas of his life, including not just employment, but in relationships with people. And he, you know, 20 years later has sustained all those changes. So neurofeedback is research-based. It's safe. It's an amazing resource for a developing brain. And the changes as far as 10 years out have been shown in research. So I want you to consider this as a way to improve focus, um, bring calm, help regulate mood, whatever. If it's a dysregulated behavior, or anywhere in that under and overstimulated sleep, irritability, this should be a tool and a resource that you consider um, and can feel awesome about it. Be well, everybody. And I can't wait to hear more about how neurofeedback is changing your life.